God of miracles. You have no idea how that may fit in with the message that we're going to hear, so hopefully we'll see that very clearly and very well. Happy New Year. It is so good to be here with you. Uh, I get the opportunity to bring God's Word a few times during the year. Usually one of those times ends up being right around this time during the year so that Pastor Stewart can have a well-deserved, well-earned break. And so uh, here I am again with you to start the new year. So it's great. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you. As we begin today, uh, our message today, do we have our scripture commitment that we can read together? Before we hear God's word, let's make our commitment by reading this together, uh, our commitment to God. This is God's word given to help me know and love God. I will read it, live by the teachings Jesus gave us, and use it to change lives and build community for Christ. Amen. Thank you. Our scripture reading this morning comes from Luke chapter 17, verses 11 through 19. And if you happen to have a pew Bible or want to read along, it's page 852. This is Luke chapter 17, verses 11 through 19. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten lepers approached him. Keeping their distance, they called out, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were made clean. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. He was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, Were not ten made clean? But the other nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return to give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, Get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's my best impression of a flight attendant. If you've been on a plane, and when you're getting off the plane, they do their very best to sound sincere to the 200 people that are getting off of the plane and saying, thank you, thank you, thank you. Usually during the course of it, they've figured out that they want to try to get some of their work done, so they start doing other thank you, thank you, you know, while they're doing things. Thank you. Today's message is about thanks. What kind of thanks? What are we thankful for? Who are we thankful to? And and how is our thankfulness shown? Let's think about that together from God's Word. In our scripture, there is a man, a Samaritan, who returns to thank Jesus for the healing that he received. Okay, he was a leper. There were 10 of them, in fact. A very serious disease that caused them to be outcasts from the community and, in fact, really ultimately led to death. It happens, you know, a lot of times during the holiday season that you get to have time to do some things that are different than maybe you normally do. And of course, during this holiday season, I had more time to watch TV, and I found myself watching the old, old movie, Ben-Hur, right? 
Now, I mentioned this in the earlier service, but I always check the demographics a little bit. There's a certain part of the audience that you can say that, and they will nod, oh, yes, Charles, Charlton Heston, they remember that. Uh, with Becca, my 12-year-old daughter, I realized she had no clue who Charlton Heston was or Ben-Hur and no concept of it at all. But it's a great old, old movie, one of those epic movies. But in this movie, it particularly struck me because I was preparing this message and looking and thinking about the lepers that were in this. But in that movie, Charlton Heston, who plays Ben-Hur, believes his mother and his sister are in fact dead. He believes they're dead because that's what they wanted him to believe. The reality was that they had contracted leprosy. And so significant and horrible was this disease that they thought emotionally for him, it was better off that he thought that they were dead. That would be easier than the reality, than the truth. There comes a point in the movie where he finds out that in fact they're not dead and he goes to where they're staying and they are in this camp that's outside of the city. In fact, it's like a gorge, uh, a dugout area that has caves and they just are left there on their own, this colony of lepers to make their own way. And they depend on the kindness of others who uh, lower food on a, on a little platform and a rope. They lower the food down into the gorge and they come out and get it and they subsist on that type of thing. Leprosy was such a condemnation that they felt that their son would be better off if he thought they were dead and didn't know the suffering that they were going to. Now, think of that in the context of this group of ten that comes to see Jesus as he's walking through the area and entering into a village. They stay at a distance because that's what they had to do. They were unclean. They were not able to even come close. So they stayed their distance and called to him, Master, have mercy on us. They stayed away. Jesus saw them. It, the term that they use, master, really is one that's used throughout the Gospels of the New Testament that the disciples used to describe Jesus. That's what the disciples called him, master. They use that same term and phrase. Asking for his pity. Jesus simply says, as he does in a number of other instances, right, Go and show yourselves to the priests, knowing that he, in fact, is healing them, but tells them to go and show themselves to the priests. As they go, they immediately realize that, in fact, they've been cleansed and their disease is gone. But only one comes back to thank Jesus. The first thing that I really want us to think about with this is what are we thankful for? There are so many things to be thankful for. Particularly during the holiday season, we have an opportunity often to be with friends or family uh, and to think about things just in a kind of new and refreshed way and to be thankful. There are many, many things to be thankful for. But what are you thankful for that rises to this level of significance that the leper experienced? I'm thankful that in high school, God, through a series of things, led me to be a part of a youth group where I really heard about Jesus' love and forgiveness and acceptance. Now, my family had gone to the church. I had sat in the pews or gone to Sunday school. I had heard different things, but it was really through this youth group that God arranged for me to be a part of that I heard his word and was able to accept Jesus as my Savior. I, I'm thankful that later in my life when 
I had strayed somewhat and made some bad choices or decisions, but that God had shown me again His love, His forgiveness, and His acceptance. What are you thankful to God for? I know it's the many, many good things that He gives to us, but what rises to that level of understanding and thankfulness. Throughout the Old Testament, there are many, many descriptions of thanksgiving. In fact, in the book of Leviticus, which is one that's really a lot of those uh, verses and instructions that we don't relate to very well today, but have to do with offering sacrifices and selecting, you know, a young bull without blemish and all of those different things that we, well, I don't understand that. But there are descriptions there of offering sacrifices of thankfulness, thank offerings, expressing in a way the significance of our thankfulness to God for His salvation. The Psalms are filled with songs of thanksgiving. How do we offer that thankfulness to God? In Psalm 107, it says, let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for mankind. Let them sacrifice thank offerings and tell of his works with songs of joy. Are we thankful? Are we ever mindful of the things of that level of significance? As we thank God? Or do we have more of that Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Sincere, but perhaps not so deep in terms of its expression. What are you thankful for? But also to think, who are you thankful to? Uh, we need to align kind of the, the significance of what we're thankful for also with who we're thankful to. Uh, the, in November of 2018, so just uh, a short time ago, Snoop Dogg, uh, one of my favorite characters to quote in sermons. No, not, not really. But Snoop Dogg was awarded a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. And in his thank you speech, he did recognize uh, a number of people, family friends, agents, people that had helped him in his career. But then much of his thank speech went in this way. I want to thank me for believing in me. I want to thank me for doing all of this hard work. I want to thank me for having no days off. I want to thank me for never quitting I want to thank me for always being a giver and trying to give more than I receive. So who was he thankful to? Now, this is not really to be critical of Snoop, because you know what? There are things we can be thankful to ourselves for. I'm thankful that I've had a pretty fortunate career I'm thankful for God for the opportunities that he gave me. But you know what? Like Snoop, I've worked really hard. So I can thank me for some of those things that I've achieved. But let's align what we are thankful for and who we are thankful to in the right way. That's kind of the point of what we want to make here. Snoop's thank you speech was hilarious. And it was fine. You can look it up online. There are a couple of expletives that I think they delete or bleep, so hopefully you get that version, but, but it's fine. In our reading from Scripture, Jesus healed the ten lepers, but only one of them came back. So aligning the nature of what he was thankful for and who he was thankful to, he came back and praising God in a loud voice. There was nothing calm or quiet or subtle about this. He came back in a loud voice, praised God. And he threw himself at Jesus' feet, and he thanked him. 
he matched his expression of thankfulness and who he was thankful to with the level of what he was thankful for. This was taking away a sentence of death, of cleansing him and bringing him back into the community. He was thankful at that level. So as we think about what we're thankful for and who we're thankful to, at what level does our thanks get expressed? Is it for football games? You know, we see many people on TV, I'm thankful that God, to God that we won this football game. And that's great. It's not to say that we shouldn't be thankful for those things. But as we begin this new year, 2019, the challenge that I would have for us is what are we thankful for and who are we thankful to? But also, how does that thanks express itself? What do we do about it as the leper who came back? There was a movie, another movie, a number of years ago called Pay It Forward. Do you remember that movie? Haley Joel Osman, really cute, cute kid a middle school student. He gets an assignment from his social studies teacher, who is Kevin Spacey. He gets an assignment that the teacher says, in fact, I know this is like an impossible assignment. And in the years that I've given it to my students, really, I don't think anyone has ever really got it or come up uh, with something that rises to the level of expectations. But I think it's something you ought to think about, and I'm going to give it to you anyways. And the social studies assignment basically is <clears throat> to come up with an idea, to come up with something that you think will change the world. Whoa. <laughs> you know, that's pretty tough to get an A on a, an assignment like that, right? <clears throat> so the child thinks about it. He really takes it seriously. He wants to try to come up with something and this is the idea that he comes up with. The concept of paying it forward. To pay it forward. And the idea is this. <coughs> is that if he could watch people become aware of what would be such a significant need to an individual and help them to care for them, to help them in their need, that if he could reach out in that way, it would motivate that person then to do the same for someone else, to look for someone else that they could help. And that in such a way, this could then begin to multiply in a manner that really would change the world. <coughs> now, in this movie, this middle school student starts by helping a homeless man. Now imagine if you're a parent, and you can think about this with your middle, middle school child that you come to know or understand by going into the garage one day, that he has invited a homeless man to kind of camp in the garage. He's giving him food, letting him wash his clothes. He's helping to take care of this homeless man then you didn't know about that. <clears throat> it's quite a shock. But he reached out to this man at such a time in his life when he was at such a level of need that it moved him. It moved him to a greater expression of thankfulness himself. <clears throat> so that as he's on the way, on his way walking, he comes across a woman who has climbed up onto a bridge who's going to leap off to commit suicide, to kill herself. And he is moved to reach out to her and to tell of how someone did something good for him and that he needed to do something good like that for her and to help her realize that whatever she thought was so bad that would lead to taking her life really wasn't so bad and that if she would let him, it would also help save him and they could save each other. And she gives up on her effort and, and doesn't commit suicide. 
the, the little boy's mom has her own history that I won't go into of problems and challenges, but one of them is that she is completely estranged from her own mother. But through his efforts <clears throat> of trying to reach out and care for each of them, they end up reconciled and being together. His teacher, Kevin Spacey, carries with him the both emotional and physical scars of things that happened to him in his youth that really make him incapable of being able to open up to love others or to allow himself to be loved. But through this boy's efforts and this idea of paying it forward, he touches his teacher as well and opens him up such that this, in the movie, they begin to call the pay it forward movement. Now we know of movements today, right? And they, they talk about this as a pay it forward movement. It's a beautiful idea. The, the thing for us to realize and understand is that we don't have to be part of starting the pay it forward move it, movement. It's already been done for us through Jesus. What greater expression could there be of his love, his unconditional love and acceptance and forgiveness than this baby that was just born that we celebrated his birth who is now on the way to the cross to die for us, to be raised from the dead, to show that he has overcome death. What greater expression? That's the pay it forward movement. <laughs> and if we are truly thankful, that is, we understand not only for the things that God gives us every day, which we should be thankful for, but for that gift of salvation. What are we moved to do out of an expression of thanks? One of the things that's a challenge sometimes for us to reconcile in our faith is this. The Bible clearly teaches that our salvation, that is our forgiveness from God, comes completely from Him and not through anything that we do. In, in fact, it says it's that way so that there's nothing we could boast about or any claim that we could take. It comes from Him. It's free. And we receive it through faith. So much so that people that want to be critical of Christians or Christianity can say, ah, you know how those Christians are. They can do anything they want, and it doesn't matter. God forgives them, and so it's an excuse to be however, do whatever, and they just get forgiveness. It comes freely from God. But reconcile that with the fact that the Bible also teaches us that if we say that we have faith, but there is no demonstration of that faith through the thankfulness that we have and the works that we show, then our faith really proves itself to be dead. So it's not from anything that we do, but if we don't do anything, hmm, it shows that the faith really isn't real. And we have to be able to put those together. But the reality is this, is just like the leper, if we realize what Jesus has done for us, the God of miracles, the miracles that he's created in our lives personally, that we can't help but express that through thankfulness in wanting to do the same for others, to help them, to reach out to them, to show our thankfulness to God by the way that we express ourselves. So this is the challenge for us as we begin the new year, right? Happy New Year. Everybody's making resolutions. One of the things that I read is, in fact, today is the most active day during the year for dating websites. They guess that this is because while people have time during the holidays to enjoy family and friends, that those who realize maybe they don't have a significant other, that they are going to 
make a commitment anew and that they're really going to go out and find that one. So we're all making resolutions. Believe me, in our family, we're talking about diet and exercise and the things that we do each year. So this is the time of year that we do that. The challenge that I would have for all of us now is for 2019, what are we thankful for? Who are we thankful to and how will we show it? There were ten lepers. Will we be one of the nine who went away saying, wow, that's great. I'm cleansed. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Or will we be the one who comes back to Jesus and in recognition of what a great thing this God of miracles has done, for us fall at his feet and give him thanks and praise and express that thanksgiving as a sacrifice through what we do to others we say that we are committed to changing lives and building community for Christ that can't happen unless it begins with a change in our own lives. And if we have that change, what a power it can be for Jesus. Let's pray together. Our Father, we thank you for your presence in our lives. And I pray, Lord, for each one here that